Hi, this is Professor Steve Anderson at the University of South Carolina Sumter Campus, affectionately known as the Bowling Professor. In our physical education class, PEDU 113, we teach the basics of bowling. We can go all the way through intermediate and sometimes even more advanced intermediate bowling depending on your skill level, but we're kind of assuming that you're new to bowling or at least new to bowling as a competitive sport. Bowling involves a lot more than just getting up there and chucking the ball down the lane. And I'd like to teach you a little bit about the bowling basics, starting with the lane itself. The lane itself is composed of two or three areas that are called by name many times by many coaches, and so it's helpful that you know these names. The approach area is where you stand and walk to deliver the ball. It's usually 12 to 15 feet in length, and it starts when you step up or down or over onto the approach. The ball return is typically to your right or to your left. And then you take off on a four-step approach, end up at the foul line, and that's where you release the ball. Hopefully you're going to be aiming at what we refer to as target arrows. Many coaches, including myself, will watch you throw the ball a couple of times before they make a suggestion as to which arrow might be a good arrow for you to aim at. And in combination with where you start your feet, we're trying to get you into a decent pocket hit, as it's called. We're also trying to avoid the channel or the gutter, because if you hit the gutter, of course, it's worth zero pins. As a matter of fact, even if it bounces out and gets some pins, you're not allowed to count those in competition and so you'd have to remove that score and bowl a second ball with a full rack. Once your ball makes it 60 feet down the lane to the pin deck, our goal is to hit the pocket and attempt to knock down all 10 pins with one ball, which is obviously called a strike. One thing I teach my students is that hitting a target that's 60 feet away is much more difficult than hitting a target that's 14 or 15 feet away. So the idea of target bowling is going to become very important to us. Again, our goal is to hit what's called the pocket. The pocket for a right-hander involves placing the ball into the 1-3 pocket at such an angle that a domino effect will take place. The one pin, properly angled, will hit the 2, which hits the 4, which hits the 7. The ball will progress to the next stage after a little deflection. And it will pick up the 3 pin, knocking it into the 6 and the 10, and knock the 5 pin into the 8, deflect slightly, and then the ball will take out the 9 pin. So in what's called a, quote, perfect strike, your ball actually only touches 4 pins. Your ball will touch the 1 pin, the 3 pin, the 5 pin, and the 9 pin and everything else is a domino effect. For a left-hander, of course, it's a mirror image. You hit the 1-2 pocket at a good angle so that the 1 goes into the 3, which goes into the 6, which goes into the 10, and then the 2 pin is going to be hit so that the 2 pin goes into the 4 to the 7, the 5 pin will go into the 9, and the 8 pin will be hit by the ball. From a top view, or a bird's eye view, there are two popular ways of creating angle into the 1-3 pocket if you're a right-hander. One is to throw a gentle curve. Not many beginning bowlers have a true hook ball. Many natural releases offer a curve ball where the ball gently changes its trajectory as it goes down the lane, entering the pocket at an angle sufficient to avoid deflection of the ball. If you're not proficient at throwing a curve ball, there is still a way to achieve angle to the 1-3 pocket, and that would be to change your trajectory and move further to the right on the approach, still hitting the second arrow, but achieving the same entry angle, or approximately the same entry angle, by changing the direction that you're throwing it, even if it's a straight ball. Now the straight ball has a much lower probability of getting a strike, and so more proficient bowlers attempt to throw a curved ball. And after a certain average, and you've gotten a certain skill level, 
It is often suggested that you move to what is called a fingertip grip, which enhances your curve capabilities even more. As always, a left-hander is just a mirror image. They can hit the second arrow on the left, producing a gentle curve into the same pocket on the other side, the one-two pocket, or they can move to the outside and hit the same second arrow and attempt to change the trajectory so that it hits the head pin at approximately the same angle, creating that domino effect. To give you an example of how you can keep it simple and not throw a huge hook but become very effective, I went and downloaded some video of a fairly old tournament. This bowler is a little bit old school in the sense that he's not throwing a lot of hook. He's in the 10th frame, he's bowling for the championship, and his opponent is a younger opponent who's throwing a stronger hook. But as it's always said in bowling, it's not how many boards you hook, it's how many pins you knock down. So let's take a look at this and see how he does on his first ball. Right over the second arrow. You'll notice how strong that ball went through the pocket and how all pins went straight back into the pit. When all ten pins go straight back into the pit, that is the sign of an extremely good hit. But you'll notice he only curved a few boards. It was not a huge hook. And so it's a very effective way to do it. This next example is Randy Peterson, the opponent of the person you just saw throw a strike. Now he throws a much larger hook, and we're going to take a look at Randy right now. Throw a great shot. Well, there's the graphic. The strike is the big one. Wasted no time at all. Bernie doesn't have any heart problems right now because he is flying. It turns out that even though it was a great shot, it left what's called a stone cold eight pin. So we learn you have to take the bad breaks with the good. I hope this tutorial has helped you. If you'd like to see more or different tutorials, feel free to contact me by email at steve at sc.edu. Thank you very much.